off to a fast start to keep the crowd of it. Paladins need to find the three. They were three of 21 against North Greenville. And as I mentioned earlier, this is JP Pegues' team, his first action of the season. Can he lead these Paladins to victory tonight? Berman wearing the purple tonight. Belmont in the white. Nice pass down low. Can't finish with it was Gillespie, the sophomore out of Tennessee. Quickly back the other way, immediately going down. It's Marcus Foster and Pegues to set up the offense. Furman, Coach Ritchie said, played really hard on Monday night, said maybe didn't execute as well, was a little sloppy, but was pleased with the effort. Maybe a little more focus here tonight as Pegues down the right side. Count it, and he'll go to the line for one. Welcome back, J.P. Pegues. Yeah, welcome back, J.P. Pegues. We were just talking about it. It's his team establishing himself right out of the box, gets the bucket and the extra shot. Yeah, Bryant Paladin has had 20 plus turnovers, right? The other night, Belmont only had 13 in their opener against Georgia State. So taking care of the basketball, very important for the Paladins tonight. And I think having Pegues back will definitely help with that. Offensive rebound taken down by Tyrese Huey. Furman will get another look. Foster finds Heen. Heen, the only senior on this Furman team, mix of experience and youth as he leads it short. And this Belmont team likes to get out and run. Furman's gonna have to transition defense. Taking a look at the starting lineup presented by Bonza Core. That three pointer too strong. Gillespie, Walker, Davidson, Dia, and Kay Tyson for the Bruins. As you see now, the Paladins starting five presented by Bonza Coors. Now, double dribble down low, and it'll be a turnover for the Paladins. This Belmont team, very, very successful over the last 13 seasons, 20 plus wins. Each of those last 13 seasons, that's the likes of Belmont or Gonzaga, Kansas, Oregon, all with them. So both these programs are kind of what you, you strive to be in the mid-major ranks. And this is the kind of game you want to see the Paladins playing even more of in the next couple of seasons as they continue to rise up the ranks of mid-majors, squaring off against the best in mid-major land. That's the way to do it. This is part of a home and home the next two seasons. Furman will travel to Nashville and Belmont next year to complete what would be four straight seasons of playing on the home court. That one blocked away by Davidson. And the Bruins a chance to take their first lead here in the early going. Great drive and buckets by Gillespie. This Gillespie part of a dynamic backcourt, quick dribble. This Belmont team not afraid to, very built. Mark, a little bit like Furman, can have guards that can drive it down low, but you can't fall asleep along the arc and knock down the three-pointer. There's Heen down the middle, blocked with a foul going against Kay Tyson as Heen went for the one-handed slam, and Tyson a little late getting over. Yeah, boy, I thought uh, you could hear the hit, right? So we know that he hit his hand, but I thought Tyson was going to come over and nab that. Heen hesitated just a second before he went to the rack, but he got there a little bit quicker. He had the flush and the foul. The body coming in for Cade Tyson, the sophomore out of Monroe, North Carolina, can light it up for this Belmont team. He ain't at the line to shoot two. Senior out of Concord, North Carolina. For the career, not a great free throw shooter, but people always talked about J.P. Pegues and that shot against Virginia Wells. He ain't hitting two free throws about 10 seconds yeah. before that. If he doesn't hit those two, that doesn't set up Furman for that win as he goes one to two from the line. He got Belmont the steal the too, right? To yep. pass to Pegues. So uh, an important integral part of that win. Half court man to man for the Palin. His ball sent out, thought about the three with it was Dia. Come all the way down. It'll be a foul down low. Looks like they're going to get Tyree Huey on the block. So it'll be two coming at the line for the Bruins. Belmont shoots a metric ton of three pointers, right? So see. Uh, entered Division One back in 1996. They have more three-pointers than any team in the country. They're usually in the top 25 in three-pointers made almost every season in Division One. So you've got to respect him out on the line, and that's what you saw Dia do right there, right? He did the shot fake, got his man up in the air, drove, and got the foul. Dia, the sophomore, 6'9", 240 out of Murfreesboro, Tennessee, one of two. And Furman wanting to go quickly. Pegues fires it to Foster. One more in the corner. This is a player to watch for the Palin is P.J. Smith, the dynamic transfer from Lee College, the junior out of Laverne's Tennessee. Going to add to that backcourt, that block from behind. So a couple early on, Belmont contesting shots down low. Yeah, I've been impressed with their defense so far, making the Paladins work for it. Look at the respect they're giving Tyson. Huey was all the way out on him, what, five feet outside of the three-point line. Missing point-blank range, got to convert those. Quickly back the other way, Marcus Foster. 
Out to Pegues, thought about a three, down low, nice find to Heath, turn around, two-handed Sam. And tell you what, the offense really running through J.P. Pegues right now. Yeah, he's looking really good, and uh, Belmont's been doing a great job of shutting down the fast break for the Paladins, getting their guys back, not giving them any easy baskets, but Pegues got Heen an easy one there. Brief stoppage of play as the ball went along the baseline. Tied up at five, just over three minutes going here in the opening half. Yeah, man, they're literally guarding Tyson, what, 27, 28 feet out from the basket, and I don't blame him as many points as he put up in the last game and as strong as he is offensively. Floater mid-range off the mark, rebound taken down by Furman. Rebound six to four early on in favor of the Paladins. McGee's out to Huey. Huey working against Tyson. Bruins sitting in the half court, man-to-man -man defense. Furman early 40% from the field. Heen's three quarters, perfect. And Garrett Heen gives the Paladins a three-point lead. He talked about Furman finding the long range. Nice to see an early one, the first one, go through the net if you're a Paladin fan. Yeah, and Heen's already got six, only had two the other night, so a great start for him. Furman playing without Alex Williams tonight. Williams banged up, hurt his finger in that win over North Greenville, so he'll be out for a handful of weeks as that recovers. There's some changes coming in for the Paladins. Davis Molnar, the redshirt freshman of Fayetteville, North Carolina, Carter Witt coming in as well, and then Ben Vanderwall. Tell you what, the, the wild card, people were really impressed with Molnar on Monday night. Kind of the unknown and some big time minutes for the Paladins. Yeah, seven points and eight rebounds. Paladins going a little bit smaller here, so an interesting lineup. We'll keep our eye on this, and there's Tyson with his first bucket. Tyson with the hand in his face. There you see Alex Williams looking sharp on the sideline, has a cast on that left hand. 8-7 pal, and his next whistle will take us to the under-16 timeout. Big time mid-major matchup earlier in the season. Spagis jumpers knocked down. I'll tell you what, it doesn't look like he missed much. It's looking great, man. You give him a little bit of room and he's gonna make you pay. A really nice jump shot there. Three-point Furman lead, ties their largest here in the early going. Out to Tyson, open three on the way, rare miss. Ball tipped out, out of bounds, will be Furman basketball. When we come back, both teams tickling the twine early. 15-29 to go here in this opening half. Furman with the early 10-7 lead here in Greenville. Bryant Lambert, Mark Childress back with you here early going from Timmins Arena. Mark, both teams really kind of getting in a rhythm offensively. Yeah, I've been impressed, especially this early in the season, the way they've been shooting the basketball. Huey already has four rebounds for the Paladins, something to keep your eye on. He had eight the other night, and Heen with an offensive explosion. He leads the Paladins with six so far. Belmont yet to make a sub. Furman now going nine deep, or excuse me, eight deep here in the first five minutes as Pegues takes his time, left-handed finish, can't get it. And Tyson with the rebound. Belmont wanting to go quickly into the front court. Cross step, might have gotten away with the wall. Back out to Tyson, open look, too strong. Long rebound taken down by Molnar. Tyson's had two open looks already, missed them both. Paladins have to keep their eye on him. Heen's gonna try it again, already one for one. Make it two for two. Garrett Heen looks right at the student section and he's heating up, firming up six early. Heen outscoring Belmont on his own so far with nine. God, Gillespie so good and so quick, uses the left hand off the glass. That's transition basketball after a make. Getting the basket or bucket out of the basket and then running down and getting all the way to the glass. Furman's hit four of their last five from the field. 56% here in the early going from the field. A little miscommunication. Pegues was trying to backdoor cut and was cut off and Palin's turned it over for the second time. P.J. Smith back in as Pegues will take a breather. We'll see for the first time Cooper Bowser, the 6'11", Freshman out of Woodbridge, Virginia. We joked last time out, you can't teach 6'11", and tell you what, he did some things Monday night that made you think he's not really a freshman. Yeah, Bowser's been very impressive. Glad to get to see him in person for the first time tonight. Nice take all the way down, gets the roll, good finish. Jace Willingham, the graduate out of Jasper, Alabama, and that's back-to-back -back buckets getting all the way to the rim for the Bruins. Yeah, and Belmont just on the attack on the offensive end, right? Eight points in the paint now for Belmont. That ball knocked around, out of bounds. They'll stay with the Paladins, 14 on the shot clock. Active hands on both sides defensively. Bob Ritchie, the Paladins head man, always talks about, hey, deflections, a key metric defensively, and that's really alluded to 
rotations, active hands, and a nice inbound play. Vanderwall the easy two. Yeah, and a great look from Witt. Gave him the time to break free. Easy basket. Four-point Paladin lead. 13-45 remaining in this opening half. Moore grabbing Tyson. These Furman guards are going to have to find a way to keep the ball in front of them. Nice pass to the corner, and again, more points in the paint. Belmont dissecting that Furman man-to-man -man off the dribble. Yeah, and it all started again with Gillespie. He's a handful for the Paladins. Now Witt doing his version to get to the rim. A player who made big strides this offseason. They talked about Carter Witt. Looked a little more composed, not rattled by that ball pressure. Yeah, he did a really good job. Pulled a, Willi uh, pulled a Willingham right on him, right? There, Molnar coming over from the weak side. Knocks it away. Furman in transition. Vanderwall stops, pops. Too strong and falls off the weak side. Furman's first miss from long range. Quickly back the other way. P.J. Smith knocks it away. Back and forth we go. Smith wanting to go coast to coast. He's fouled. And the junior will go to the line for two. Mark, fast-paced basketball. Love it, man. Back and forth down both ends of the floor. I thought Bowser was going to get loose maybe for an alley-oop down there on the other end. Belmont did a good job of getting back. And you saw Vanderjack. Got some of P.J. and he'll head to the line. 17-13, yeah, we're on quite the pace right now offensively, Brian. Smith, the transfer from Lee University, started his Paladin career with nine points and three rebounds the other nights. We talked about what Belmont's done over the last 13 seasons, 20 or more games. The Paladins won 20 plus games, 15th time in program history a season ago. They've done it six of the past seven years. So, Mark, you talk about these two programs. It's really been a model of consistency, and it's as hard as it is to win that many games, to do it over and over, year in, year out, especially in the transfer portal and the NIL deals. It's hard to get good players and keep them. And I thought an interesting point by Bob Ritchie in the Southern Conference preseason media days was the Bothwell and Slauson as that goes into the backcourt. He goes, let's not talk about why Bothwell and Slauson didn't leave. Let's talk about why they stayed. Yes. And the, the program they built here, and then Slauson getting drafted, and Bothwell getting to go to the summer league and playing overseas. It's a really interesting way to look at it of like, why do you not leave? But what do these type programs have to offer? Right. And again, the Paladins, a mid major on the rise. Belmont's been a, a really strong mid major, and they do a great job of holding on to their players as well. And like you said, in this NIL era, you've got to offer a lot, right? You've got great coaching here. You've obviously got the incredible environment, academic environment at Furman, and what a coaching staff, right? They're holding on to their players, and a great play from Bowser. Bowser finishes down low, a nice job being patient and using his size. Furman pushes the lead to seven, their largest here in the first eight minutes. There's gotta be some Mario Brothers jokes about Bowser. <laughs> I'll let you work them in uh, over the course of the season. Haven't quite thought through mine yet. <laughs> There's so many possibilities that I'm gonna have to stay away from that right now. Flip side, skip pass, nine on the shot clock, tries to lay it down. Tyson with the rebound. Fights through Molnar and lays it in. Nice rebound by Kay Tyson, but he's slow getting up. He is limping back down the court, but he is so strong. Paladin's on the aggression. There's Bowser. Two-handed putback slam. Mark, you called it, but all because of Kay Tyson slow getting back. We'll have to watch. He looks to be okay. Tweak that ankle. Man, both of these teams just shot out of a cannon offensively, just dead on the attack on the offensive end. And if you get a turnover in transition or you get a quick rebound, they are out like a rabbit. Davidson sends it to the corner, open for three, off the mark, wide open there was Willingham. Furman can push the lead now to double digits early with a three. Whit, coast to coast, right-handed finish off the mark, Bowser can't quite put it back. Back and forth we go now, Davidson looking to go coast to coast, nice lead behind off the glass and in by Walker. They what, composed in transition there by Willingham. Yeah, Belmont doing a good job of sticking around, the Paladins have been a better side so far. And uh, Belmont keeping it close. That's what they need to do right now. Here's Witt, top of the key. Hesitates, sips it far side. Molnar open, three-pointer on the way. Short, nice find though. Molnar was all alone. And now quickly back the other way, Davidson throws it up. A little bit out of control, but an offensive rebound taken down. Really good play by Bowser with the block from behind. Here come the Paladins. 
both these teams like to get out, go quick. Bowser down low, going to work, mismatch off the high Archie right-handed hook. And tell you what, does he not look like a no? He's not a freshman. Third year right now. No, he is not a freshman. He is playing like a veteran right now. Impressive on both ends of the floor. Tyson puts it down, blocked. Loose ball out of bounds. They'll stay with the Bruins when we come back. This Timmons Arena crowd starting to get into it. 10.05 to go here in the opening half. Berman up a touchdown as Cooper Bowser, the freshman. Whoa. Taking a look at the series, series history presented by Michelo Glotra. We talked about being in the middle of home and homes, the fifth meeting all time. Everybody running on their home court so far this season. The first of a two game series. Last season completed the first two game set. It was Furman winning by 15, but you talked about the difference in that game with the boards. Early on here tonight, 11 apiece on the rebounding. Yeah, Belmont is doing what they need to do on the boards. You know what they're not doing? Knocking down the three point shots. They're 0 for 4 from behind the arc, and all four were uncontested three pointers. So you know Belmont's going to start heating up as they go on. They were 8 of 20 from three, and they went over Georgia State last week. The Bruin basketball after the timeout. Last touch by the Paladins. Shot clock sitting at 20. Furman, how about this? 56% from the field, two of three from long range. The Bruins 0 of four early on from downtown. A little bit of a trapping zone look out of that timeout coming from Furman. Gillespie skipped past three on the way. Right on line, just too strong. Foster up to Pagis. Trailing P.J. Smith, and now Furman will reset. I think that's where you see some maturity out of this Furman team. You like to get out and run, and you don't force it. Here sets up the half-court offense, and the three-pointer knocked down by Tyrese Huey. That's good offense. Yeah, Huey's been great on the board so far with four. Knocks down the three-pointer. Palin is back up ten. Belmont missing their last four from the field. They're eight of 20, 40% here in the first ten-plus minutes. Willingham sitting near side, Walker. Back the other way, Gillespie, open look, that's short. Rebound taken down by the Paladins. Here comes Pagis. P.J. Smith kicks it to the corner. Tell you what, Belmont doing a nice job getting back on that initial break, forcing Furman to run the half-court offense. Backdoor cut, reverse layup, count it. Give the assist to Garrett Heen, and he gives the goggles on the way back down the court. Yeah, he's having himself a night. You won't see a better pass than that this evening. Paladins defense has been doing a great job of keeping Belmont away from the basket, making them settle for the longer shots, and they have not been shooting them well so far. Do a good job defensively here. They're out on the break again. You know what, timeout here. I think if Furman might put it in, but it's going to be a foul first. Just a fourth team foul, no shots. But Furman in this building, plays so well this crowd kind of builds the momentum i don't by no means really early not danger time here for casey alexander's squad but you got to find a way to stop the momentum i think you got to think about getting Kay tyson back in there and trying to extend that Furman defense it's starting to be active well we wonder if tyson's okay right he came up a little gimpy and, and went out soon thereafter yeah, he's behind Hopefully the he's bench, all right it looks like yeah something to watch out for 7-0 run for the paladins over the last 151. Geese. Finds a cutting Smith, sends it back out to Foster, hesitates, drives off the glass and in. How about not settling for the three and lays it off the glass for a 14-point lead? Yeah, veteran move from Marcus Foster, and the Paladins are blowing this one open right now. Shooting a cool 62% from the field. That helps. Walker three-pointer off the mark. That looked a little bit forced, and here comes Furman. Again, we talked about that Paladin defense is keeping Belmont away from the basket. They did not do a good job of that early. They were letting them drive a lot, not lately, shutting them down. Eight Furman assists on 13 made field goals here through the first 12 minutes. Media timeout coming, next whistle. Foster to Heen, can't finish off the front of the rim, battle out of bounds, and it'll stay with the Paladins when we come back. 9-0 Furman run has pushed the lead to 14 points. Belmont trying to slow down this Paladin offense. 
see Marcus Foster fighting through contact and is all Furman here in the first 12 minutes. You see Bob Ritchie leading his Paladins to a 14 point lead so far and Furman Paladins very difficult to beat at home. Won 16 of their last 18 games dating back to last season. 33 of 35 regular season non-conference wins. Timmons Arena, one of the best home court advantages around. It's not like Furman has shied away from tough non-conference play either. Foster all day downtown and knocks it down. Furman up 17, doubling up Belmont. And the help defense wasn't there. You talk about this place getting tough to play and being tough to play. Coach Richie challenging the Furman students, which is a packed student section on night in, night out. He's like, show up early. Make a little hard in warm-ups. And you're just kind of taking that next step as Belmont trying to get something going down low. Nice finish. Mark, you're making the point doing that break. Furman had gotten success defensively by stopping that dribble drive. Yeah, almost a four minute scoring drought for Belmont and they were settling for jump shots and they 0 for 7 from behind the arc. That's Heen's first miss from behind the arc. Foster gets a great rebound. Paladins made a great adjustment. A lot of early points, 14 of their first 17 in the paint for Belmont. Paladins made the adjustment to, to keep their men in front of them. And since then, it has been a dominant defensive display by the Paladins. Good to see Kay Tyson back in, all the way to the glass. Nice finish there it is Jacoby Gillespie, and a quick four run for the Bruins cuts it to 13. Yeah, Gillespie leads Belmont with eight points. He is a handful and very quick with the ball. McGee's trying to battle now low, patient turns, blocked. Good defense there by Davidson, and Belmont now making a little run. Exactly what the Bruins needed out of the break. They need a three-pointer badly, still can't get one to go. Bruins 0 of 7 from long range, and there's Tyree Shuey emphatically putting it through. Tyree Shuey now with five points. Every Paladin player that has played has scored except Molnar, and he added an assist in six minutes of action along with the board. Man, I love Huey's game. You see him offensively doing some things. A grinder on defense, has a lot of rebounds so far. Really impressive. Smith under the basket, looking for somewhere to go with it. Leaves it off to Heen. Look what I found. Garrett Heen fights through contact. Tell you what, a little quiet on Monday night. He has 11 in the first half. Yeah, Heen's playing spectacular right now. Smith uh, got a little bit lucky with a pass, but things are going the Paladins' way right now. That's when the ball rattles around underneath, right to Heen for a layup. 11 firm and assist. That's off the bat. Loose ball taken down by Pagis. You mentioned a timeout earlier. I'm surprised Belmont has not called one yet. You're seeing a little bit of body language from them as well. Pallet is just grinding them in the sand right now. Media timeouts falling at opportune times. As Pagese fights through contact, late whistle, and he'll go to the line for two. Are they going to call an offensive foul? No, they're going to get one going against Belmont. The right call there underneath, and there'll be two at the line for J.P. Pagese. Mark, take another look, right call. Yeah, I mean, he went up and uh, couldn't see if his feet were within the circle or not, but it didn't matter a ton of contact. It just took a while on the whistle. That's why I think we all hesitated, right? I thought the whistle would come immediately. Pagese had already hit the floor before they called it. Pagese will go to the line. He missed his only free throw attempt earlier tonight. Furman, as a team, just two of five from the charity strike. Now three of six. Furman out rebounding Belmont now 20 to 13 a little bit of line change for the Bruins Furman with some fresh bodies as well Molnar Bowser and Whit to check in Molnar away to Pagese can makes it so you've interesting a lot of different lineup looks coach Bob Ritchie's going with it's really not subbing one at a time or two at a time it seems to be working yeah I was about to say it's working really well right whatever buttons he's pushing right now he has got the hot hand Let's see if he can keep it going for Furman so new faces in the lineup for well uh, as well for Belmont as we see uh, when Miller's in for the first time as they see if they can get something going offensively. When Miller, the 6'3 freshman out of Estavia Hills, Alabama. His Vander Jack sends it out. Might have gotten away with a wall. D a tough fadeaway jumper front rim, and I think Furman will live with that shot every time. Absolutely. With far side Vander Wall for three. Short ball tipped around out of out or out to the front. Furman will stay with it. Foster three, no. Back-to-back -back three pointers off the mark and Belmont will slow things down. That was a great play by Molnar to just go up and punch the ball back out to one of the Paladins to give him that second look. No K Tyson, he went out uh, with an injury earlier, came back in for a little while and is now back out. So you wonder if he's at 100%. Top scorer. Billy Dunlop 
with the foul. Brian Christian, Billy Dunlap, Luke Payne, your officiating crew this evening. They're gonna say that was a shooting foul, so two shots coming up for Vander Jack. This Belmont team, a tough schedule that Casey Alexander's crew has put together. They're playing 13 games against teams that were in the quad one or quad two of last year's net ranking, so not shying away from competition. This Belmont team in their second season in the Missouri Valley. Yeah, again, one of the top mid-majors in the country. Regular postseason appearances for them. They've been, been in postseason play 15 of the last 18 seasons, nine of those in the NCAAs. That's legit. 17-point lead approaching the under four media timeout here in the opening half. It's been Paladins consistent offensively, 53% from the field to help open up this lead. Herman's led by as many as 19. Foster tries to get it to Bowser, knocked away, nice steal, and Furman turns it over for the third time. That was about to be a Bowser dunk, really good defense from Belmont. The Bruins, two of their last 13 from the field, they need to see a ball or two go in the bucket. Nice finish all the way to the glass. The success for the Bruins have been getting to the rim and a quick four row spurt. Big last three and a half minute for Belmont. Furman Monday night had a handful lead over North Greenville and it was the Crusaders that used the end of the first half to help come back and now back to back turnovers for Furman. Chance for Belmont to string some buckets together. Yeah, sloppy with a basketball, not what you want to see if you're a Paladin fan. All set baseline, back to the corner, three on the way off the mark. Belmont still 0 of 9 from long range. One of the best three-pointing shooting teams in the country. Dry so far. Foster blocked. Quickly coming back the other way. Bruins have numbers. Dia, coast to coast, off the glass and in, and it's going to be a timeout taken by Furman as Belmont on a quick 6-0 run has cut this Paladin lead to 13. Boy, Dia, the Vandy transfer, quite impressive. But it's been Paladin so far. You see the big dunk from Huey. Furman with the double-digit lead. Back on the field here sometime in the next couple of weeks with the playoffs looming. Paladins hosting VMI tomorrow, an outright conference title if they get the dub, Brian. That's a big game tomorrow afternoon. About 200 yards from Timmins Arena over at Paladin Stadium. Belmont, a 6-0 run over the last minute, 23, a 19-point deficit down to 13, and Furman taking a timeout. And doing the timeout, you could hear the Furman staff to our left talking about defending the transition and Belmont getting out a little bit and getting to the glass. Yeah, the Paladins have been dominant on the boards, 23 to 15 so far. That combined with the 0 for 9 from behind the arc from Belmont, and you see why the Paladins are up 13. Keen from downtown, his first miss from long range. Vanderwall with the put back, no. Rebound taken down by the Bruins. A chance to crawl within 10. Dia off the glass and in, the physical transfer, and all of a sudden it's an 11 point game, an 8-0 run. Yeah, the transfer from Vanderbilt is so impressive with another bucket. Two shots upcoming for Vanderwall. You see how quickly Dia's getting into the front court. Casey Alexander's arguing for maybe an and one on the far side with contact. Then Furman quickly coming back the other way, trying to respond. As both teams pretty subdued fouling. Belmont with six personals, Furman with three. And Vanderwall will go to the line where he's trying to add to his two point total, and he does. Big last two minutes here. Does this get within single digits? And then the Bruins have a little bit of momentum heading into the half. Can Furman push it back? I was literally about to say the exact same thing. You know what? Great minds think a lot, Bryant Lamberts. And uh, yeah, I do think that's an important piece of this. The Paladins have been over double digits for a while, stretch of what, as high as 17, I think, at 19, one point. Yeah. Up to 19 at one point. So Belmont finding a way to get this into single digits before half would be a huge win for them. Especially when you've got absolutely nothing from Cade Tyson. Furman, no field goal at the last 320, just over of their last five and two of their last 10. Ball sent far side, taken away by Pagese. Defense tried to lead the offense, but it goes right through the hands of Huey out of bounds. Furman turns it over. He has five turnovers now for the Palace. I think three of them have come in the last two game minutes, so the Palace have done a great job of cutting down on the turnovers when they had an absolute ton against North Greenville the other night. Done a much better job with the basketball until these last few possessions. There's a whistle, and the Paladins with their fourth team foul. Hey Brian, you know what you did. You talked about how there hadn't been many yep. fouls. So you know move. what's coming the last two minutes, right? <laughs> Here comes the whistle. Up, up, up. 
two fouls going. I thought it was two, the bench yelling, but I believe it's one, and that's going to get T.J. Smith back to the bench with only one on Foster. Double teams on Dia. Eight to shoot. Now Vanderjack looking somewhere to go with the basketball. Lose picked up by Dia. Working against he Tough jumper off the mark, and tell you what, good defense there for about 26 seconds for the Paladins. We're keeping an eye on that double-digit mark that we talked about, Bryant. A bucket here would be good for Furman. Arrow in favor of the Paladins as it comes down to it into the half. Foster wide open, long range, and tell you what, couldn't have anybody around him. It's just knocked out of bounds, will stay with Furman. Paladins is now four of 10 from long range. Foster might have had too much time to think about that one. Yeah, it's one of those things, how can I possibly be this wide open type thing? But uh, he had one like that earlier where he took his time and knocked it down. Came up short on that one. Shot clock reset to 20. Heen right back to Pagese, three in the corner. That one's short. Furman cooling off a bit over their last seven from the field. Quickly the other way. Dia coast to coast, right-handed jam. Hello. Goodness Dia seven. Me. Dia with authority on that one. Wow. 19-point lead down to 10. Over to Heen. Dia goes right over him. Nice job utilizing the pump fake to put it in the bucket. Yeah, he did a really good job. I thought he was going to draw a little bit of contact, too. Dia did a good job on not fouling him. On a 15 second differential shot and game clock. Dia looking to go one on one against Garrett Heen. Step back, no way. Off the mark. I tell you what, I know he's playing well, but I don't know if that's the shot of Casey. Yeah, Casey Alexander's kind of looking at him and asking, what is that? Shot clock turned off. Berman with the last possession can hold for one. And hey, we're going to see what uh, the Paladins do here. Bob Ritchie. Want Pagese to hold it. It was in the shot clock or in the game clock in the first half situation Monday that turned into points the other side. Yeah, Pagese is going to take this himself. Three pointer on the way. Big shot, JP Pagese. And all the work for the Bruins to crawl back almost gets eliminated. And it's a 15 point Furman lead. And how about Casey Alexander talking to D on the way off the court? Zarina, this is the last season Furman will be playing in what folks know of this Timmins Arena, state of the art facility will be broken ground after this season in what will be one of the nicest conference arenas or basketball arenas in the Southern Conference and college basketball. Still a whole season to go here in how we see it tonight. Daheen right out of the halftime break. Ball tipped away, missed layup coming the other way quickly is the Bruins. Hesitation, whistle a foul and a chance for an old fashioned three point play. A strong start out of the halftime. Yeah, Great I thought, for the Bruins. I thought Gillespie might have shuffled his feet a little bit, but he held his ground, got the bucket and the foul, and the exact start that the Bruins wanted. You see, he keeps that pivot foot, get Pagese in the air. That's the first foul on J.P. Pagese. Gillespie now the first player for the Bruins in double digits with 10, give him now 11. So a quick start coming out of that halftime break. There you see Casey Alexander. We talked about it going to halftime. He lit into Dia for how he ended that half on kind of a selfish three-point play. We'll see what he does coming out here in the second half. McGee's trying to go down low to Heen. Heen has a size advantage, but has it poked away by Gillespie. Back-to-back -back defensive stops for Belmont to start this second half. Down low, Dia mismatched size-wise, and now a quick foul, and probably a good foul there by P.J. Smith on the floor. Yeah, that's a veteran play. That's just an automatic bucket and probably a big-time dunk in that one-on-one -on -one matchup down there. Belmont does a good job of finding the mismatch, and they'll keep the ball on the offensive end. If they can start getting anything from Tyson, they can get right back in this game. Tyson, who played limited minutes, was a little banged up in that first half. Did play 13, but used to more, which is 2 of 5 and 0 of 2 from long range. Wide open, Gillespie in and out, was halfway down, ball tipped around, loose underneath, Tyson puts it back in. And a quick 5-0 run for the Bruins to start this second half. This is exactly what we were talking about that Belmont needed to get that thing under double digits. They got an opportunity potentially to do that on their next possession. Bruins sets up the half-court offense. Ball sent over to Foster, Foster thought about a three. Back out to Pugis. Down low, loses the basketball into the hands of Heen, but he stepped on the baseline, and Herman turns it over back-to-back -back times. Three straight stops for the Bruins to start this second half. Yeah, the Paladins have run it through Heen on each of the first three possessions and come up empty. We'll see if they make some adjustments. And can Belmont see single digits for the first time in a hot minute? 
Berman's largest lead has been 19. That was at the 5.05 mark. Belmont last led at 5-3 in the first half. Double team comes down low on Dia. Gillespie. Great defense, this possession. Great defense by the Paladins. Walker, five to shoot. Nice find of Tyson. Belmont wanted a foul, not there. Now two on the shot clock. He'll stay with the Bruins. Wow, it looked like it hit one of the Bruins going out of bounds. Belmont will have two on the shot clock. This might be the best defensive possession of the game so far for the Paladins. Let's take another look. Tyson. I don't think he got Heen's hands. Maybe so. Dia with one to shoot, hand in his face. High arching shot, air ball, and it's going to be a shot clock violation. Good defensive series there for the Paladins. Yeah, they're best of the game by far, forcing the shot clock violation. Paladins still looking for their first bucket of the second half. Kyler Vanderjack, the sophomore to Grand Rapids, Michigan back in. Davidson takes a seat. Bourbon's searching for their first points here this second half. Still shooting 47% from the field. Foster, quick trigger on the way. Marcus Foster, he now has eight in the second three-pointer. Pushes the Furman lead back to 13. Furman, so many weapons from outside the arc. Really, any of the five out there can knock it down. Dia back down low. Great position. Wants to go underneath, and Garrett Heen whistled for the foul. When Dia catches it that low, he's going to be hard to stop. Yeah, I was going to say that uh, Heen's going to have trouble guarding Dia one-on-one. -on -one. You know what? Any team playing against uh, Belmont all season long is going to have a hard time guarding him one-on-one -on -one down in the paint. He does a good job of drawing the contact, and he'll go to the line to shoot two. Been really impressed by the Vandy transfer. Knocks down the first. It's now two of three from the line. Dia yeah, just three of 12 from the field, but making a bigger impact, kind of finding his own late stages of that opening half. That doesn't feel like that, does yeah. it? One of two, and now Huey grabs the rear out. Tyrese Huey. Give him five rebounds in 14 minutes of action as Berman almost turns it over, but a little bit fortunate that goes off Gillespie. Feel a little bit of sense of urgency by this Belmont team? A little yeah. bit more urgency on the defensive side in the second half? Yeah, I think they got the what for during the half and uh, have come out and look like a completely different team so far. Gillespie all over Pegues, trying to make him a little uncomfortable, and now Pegues has it poked away. Turnover bug starting to hit the Paladins in the second half. Tell you what, Gillespie might have gotten away with a walk. Crowd wanted to call it. Dia down the middle, out to a wide open Tyson. And I tell you what, Tyson, uncharacteristic 0 of 3 from long range. Wide open look there. 0 for 12 from behind the arc for Belmont. Smith down low trying to get it to Heen as it poked away into the hands of Vanderjack. Berman now with nine turnovers. Gillespie all the way, lays it up and in. And again, Furman not stopping these Belmont guards in transition, and it's back to a 10-point game. Yeah, nine turnovers for the Paladins and four in the first three minutes here in the second half. Ball set to the corner, open Smith right in front of the bench. Yes, Furman now 7 of 14 from long range and two big shots from long range to take 10-point leads to 13 in the second half. Boy, that three-point shot will cure a lot of ills, won't it? Paladins have not been sharp so far here in the second half, but have knocked down the two threes. Dia looking to respond, and Belmont can't buy one from long range. Foster. Tell you what, Gillespie doing a nice job trying to keep J.P. Pegues quiet. Here is Pegues, and Gillespie immediately on him. Step back, Pegues count it, and he'll have a chance at a four-point play. And Tell you what, he gets a little bit of space, and you see what he does. He did. You talk about playing with confidence. He gets just a little half beat of a breath, fires up the three-pointer, draws the contact, nothing but net. That's the biggest play of the game so far for the Paladins. It comes at a big moment. Belmont trying to chip back into this one, but Paladins have now extended their halftime lead from 15 to 16 and have a chance to add to that. Three three-pointers in this second half for Furman. And yeah. I feel like Belmont, they're doing everything right, really, in this second half, chipping away, playing good defense, and just a couple open looks, and all of a sudden, if Pegues can knock this one down, it's a 17-point lead again. And you talk about how explosive the Paladins are offensively. Haven't had a great offense here in the second half with the four turnovers, but as you mentioned, the three threes, and they've increased their lead.
Bowser and Molnar in there, so Furman going with a little bit of size. Vanderjack gets around Molnar all the way, lays it off the glass and in, and 41 points for Belmont, 34 of them in the paint. Quickly back the other way, looking to respond, blocked from behind, Willingham all over Bowser. Molnar gets it back, can't get it to go, and two layups missed. Boy, a couple Nothing little bunnies. Here. Yeah, a couple of bunnies by the Paladins couldn't get them to go. Tell you what, these Belmont guards are basically taking it over. Sends it back, three-pointer. Yes, finally. Willingham stops the three-point drought and quick 5-0 run back to a 12-point game. Back and forth we go. Watch out. I feel like once the Bruins see one go in from behind the three-point line, might change their fortunes from back there. Now one of 14. Pagese, can he do it again? No. Rebound taken down by Willingham. Belmont can cut it to 10, maybe nine, if they can knock down another tray ball. Tyson's gonna try one, left it go, well short. Air ball into the hands of Pagese. Casey Alexander wanted a foul, thought Tyson was hit. Yeah, Tyson was griping to the ref before the ball even got to the basket. Nice job by Smith, stops, pops, and Alexander's still fired up. We'll see if we can't get another look, but you think he might have a case just by the fact you doubt Hunter Tyson air balls the the rock too much and now a turnover and a whistle from the other side of the court they're going to get that foul going against the Paladins team fourth and now it's time for Furman to question Belmont trying to stay within fighting distance in a great mid-major clash on a Friday night 14 38 to go in this one Furman up 14 Cooper Bowser his first no Paladin has more than one foul except Garrett Heen who has two and then no Belmont has Player has more than one foul except Vanderjack who has three. So not, not huge. Uh, T-Cub and there's Cade Tyson. Been, I might have called him Hunter Tyson. And if it was, that was his brother who played for Clemson who would be in his 30th year of eligibility. Now, uh, Cade, <laughs> he, he kind of has the Hunter look to him. Got that lanky three-pointer. Their offensive rebound put back in by Walker. 6'5", 200-pound sophomore out of Wyoming, Ohio. And now poked away from behind, wide open all by himself is Gillespie and back to a 10-point game. I tell you, Gillespie is a handful. He's upped his game defensively here in the second half, shadowing J.P. Pegues. Gets the turnover, and it's right back to 10. Every time Belmont's gotten it down to 10, Furman's hit a three. Why not continue? The prophet has spoken. Bryant Lambert manifesting three-pointers for the Paladins. Furman now 9 of 17 from long range, and Belmont has to start fighting back at 13 again, and then Pegues goes straight up against the taller Tyson and stuffs him. Ooh, J.P. Pegues showing out in his first game. See Foster think about that 35-footer there? Yeah. Thought the, better of it. The logo three with his coach watching. Pegues thought about it. Gets into the lane, hesitates, fights through contact, and he'll go to the line for two. I feel like Furman's doing a nice job. They were three of 21 or two of something around there in that first game. First game, now nine of 17, but the three seem to be coming in rhythm and not forcing they are and a lot of them are coming because of J.P. Pegues either knocking them down or again finding Foster as he has a couple of times in this game with crisp passes hitting him right there in the chest where they need to be to set them up for success and again Paladin's knocking them down tonight Paladin shoot threes like this in games this season they're going to win a lot of basketball games J.P. Pegues now leads all scorers with 14 points looking for his 15 knocks them both down I think you feel like Belmont throwing some throwing some punches, gets it down to 10 as Pegues takes a seat, and then all of a sudden, 5-0 run, push it to 15, 5-0 run, cuts it back to 10. Which team maybe is not going to be able to sustain that punch, and can Belmont get back, or is Furman going to push it out? Is Gillespie, yes, step back three. Gillespie warming up. He now has 18. Yeah, he had 17 against Georgia State, has 18 tonight, and it's right back down to 12. They haven't been able to get it down to single digits yet. I still think that is a super important moment. How about Bowser two-handed jam? Carter Whip fighting through traffic. Give him the assist. 24th made field goal, and that's coming with 17 assists. Boy, Bowser is electric. Right now, if you're Furman, you got to get the ball out of the hands of Gillespie right now. Now Davidson running right into Bowser. Nice job defending without fouling. Freshman move to keep the arm straight up. Whit into the front court leading the break. Vanderwall, quarter three on the way. Short air ball, quickly the other way, Gillespie. Look at Gillespie, he's gonna wanna go coast to coast. Cuts in front, left-handed finish, no. Can't quite finish, does everything but lay it in. 
And now you see Furman wanting to slow it down yeah. a bit. Good call. Yeah, it's the right call for them to slow it down, run an offensive set, see if they can add to this lead. Witt looking to go baseline. He turns. Glass counted. Carter Witt. Furman staff was big on him in the offseason saying, hey, just bear with them. Let him get to play in the Wake Forest transfer, showing him off a little bit of offense. Yeah, Witt had 10 the other night, and uh, you're not going to see a whole lot better than that. Witt takes it all by himself against Gillespie, who's a top defender, throws it off the glass, gets the bucket, gets the foul. Big shot from Carter Witt. Been impressed with him tonight. Man, I've been impressed with the Paladins across the board tonight as they're looking to extend this lead back up to 17. Berman now 8 of 13 from the line. Vanderwall with the tip. He looks at his bench, flexes, and says, got to block me out, guys. What a big play by Vanderwall. Lead is 18. 18 quickly down to 16. Like you see the Bob Ritchie showing a little frustration. His team's got to get back defensively and get set. Witt tries to kick it to the corner. Foster thinks about it. Now we'll take it. Maybe a little out of rhythm there. And now quickly the other way. The Bruins a chance to cut into the 16-point deficit. Tyson thought about it. One more to the corner now. Davidson. Step back. Three on the way. Yes. Belmont heating up from long range. He said if one goes in, watch out. And the Bruins quickly back down to 13. Yeah, they're starting to heat up from behind the arc now. Herman cooling off. Missed their last two from downtown. Belmont another chance to cut it to 10. Next whistle will be the under 12 media timeout. There, a little hesitation off the glass, and it's an 11 point game. Boy, this is like a yo yo down to 10, up to 15, down to 10, up to 18. Right back down to 11 here with a media timeout looming on, looming on the next dead ball. Can Furman respond to push it back out? Witt sends it to the corner. Vanderwall open. No, air ball. Too strong. Dia with the rebound. Belmont can finally get it into single digits with a bucket. He at top of the key, working against Bowser. Now Davidson thought about a three. See Belmont starting to get some confidence on the offensive side. Sent to the corner, shot clock down to 12. Tyson handed his face, floater, front rim, gets it back, counted on a foul. And Tyson, K. Tyson a chance to cut it to eight when we come back. Bruins quickly cutting a deficit in half. You see Tyson with a hesitation. The shot is going to get his own rebound. It is under 10 points for the first time in a long time. Pallet is up by nine. Big three to four minutes here, Bryant. Can the Paladins run this lead back up, or is Belmont going to keep on chipping away? It will be one shot at the line for Tyson. There's Mike Bothwell back Let's in the go. house. Summer Let's league. go. Summer League champion with the Cleveland Cavaliers out in Vegas and then was playing in Israel when all the war broke out. Got back home looking for another professional opportunity. Tyson now makes it an eight-point game, and that's a 10-0 run over the last minute 22, aided by some turnovers. And now with an eight-point game, Berman's going to try to get the offense going again. Yeah, a very important possession for the Paladins. Belmont made 10 of, or four of their last five from the field in this 10-0 run. And there's see Davidson all over J.P. Pegues. Berman's responded every time the Bruins have cut it. This is the first time it's gotten to single digits this half. P.J. Smith into the lane. Fadeaway jumper up, rattles home, gets the roll. P.J. Smith in double digits with 10. Yeah, the transfer from Lee University. I've been very impressed with him. Plays very calm and within himself, also a good defender. Davidson down the lane, stripped. Berman gets the turnover. Up to Carter, Witt off the glass and in, and a quick 4-0 run out of the timeout for the Paladins. Man, this is when the Paladins are at their best, when they are out in transition, lethal tonight. Berman doing a nice job there, stopping the dribble penetration that had been such an issue. Tyson top of the key, a hand check going against Tyree Shuey. It's going to be the 16 foul, so one away from the 1-1. One one. I feel like the refs have been really good tonight, letting both teams play a little bit. It hasn't been overly physical with all the three-pointers and transition buckets that we've been seeing. But doing a good job, nobody in foul trouble. You always like to see that. Gillespie back in. He leads all scorers with 18. Dia has it poked away. He now all over him. Shot clock down under 10. Davidson thought about a three. Thinks the step back, looking to drive on Smith. He cuts him off. Dia, hand in his face, puts the dribble down, three on the way. No, loose ball taken down weak side by Huey. 
Smith into the front court, one on three, sends it to McGee, thought about it, cuts into the lane, trying to find an outlet, and it's gonna be a kick ball, will stay with the Palace. Tell you what, J.P. McGee's might've got a little belt out there, got in the air, and tell you what, he's gonna say he had a plan, but I don't know. Stays with Furman. And did a good job to not take that three-point shot. It was heavily defended by Belmont. McGee's has 15. Smith trying to get it down low to he. He had a little bit of an angle, sent it back out. Witt with 10 to shoot. Working against Tyson. Tough congested shot, might have gotten contact. No call, offensive foul over to Pekis. Can he find the range? No. And now, weak side rebound taken down. Furman can't get back defensively, two-handed jam. And tell you what, Belmont wanting a call. There's an injury on the other side. Furman looking for three. No, they're gonna say full was a line two. And then on the other side, Willingham is down and the whole Belmont bench wanting a foul on that dunk. And we'll have to take another look. Yeah, Jacoby Gillespie came in and got an unbelievable rebound from within the trees. Full court pass down there for the dunk. Willingham is up on his feet, shaking things off. Should be 76-63 as you take another look. There was a lot of contact. And then Furman fortunate on the other end to get the 5-4 fast break. And yeah, maybe a little hit on the head. Belmont's got a case and more there, right? Yeah, I think they do. And the Paladins take advantage, quickly moving back down to the other end of the floor, knocking down the three-pointer. Smith's up to 13 now for the Paladins. Officiating crew trying to get together if it was a three or a two down on this corner. I believe they're going to call it a two. Furman staff wanting that confirmed. We might have to take a look at it that next media timeout. Dia trying to grab on Heen, just muscles up and he'll be fouled. He'll be two at the line. And Dia just looks and says, nobody can stop me. Home crowd starting to get a little bit restless with the stripes. Yeah, Coach Ritchie not exactly excited about the call either. And D is a handful when he gets going. He did a good job of staying in front of him. Refs thought they saw a bunch of contact. Possible give back. Maybe you're doing a little bit of that when you don't make the call on the dunk and it's a little bit controversial. But Belmont headed to the line, down 13. What a career high. Nine assists for J.P. Pegues already. Yeah, Pegues has got uh, the nine assists, the 15 points, and the six rebounds. That's quite a stat line for your first game of the season. Dia now, let's see, two of five from the line. Marcus Foster back in. Heen takes a seat. And Heen walking right in front of us saying, Coach, I was standing right in front of him. I had my hands up. What else am I supposed to do? Come on, Coach. What else am I supposed to do? You know what he said? Keep doing it. Yeah. Second free throw. Short. 0 of 2 from the line. As it stands right now, a 13-point game. Officials probably will go back and look at one of those threes. It's wet all the way down. No! But Tyrese Huey finishes, and that gets this crowd on their feet. As it should, Tyrese Huey with the flush. Paladins back up by 15. And now a whistle and a foul. And a one and one coming up for the Bruins as the energy notch has come up as Berman wanted to walk. Take another look at this putback by Huey. Boy, he didn't even start in the screen. Huey up and the big time flush right over Dia. What a putback. Be a one and one at the line for Gillespie. He's a perfect one of one from the free throw line tonight. First one perfect, and one more upcoming for the sophomore. I haven't really seen either coach get super heated. Even players get super heated. It's been a very well officiated game. You saw the three pointer where he might have got knocked on the arm, causing a little controversy. And Coach Ritchie definitely thought there was a travel on that. And Gillespie's up to 20 for the Bruins. If you're the Bruins, you might have also wanted a foul on that Willingham dunk as well. So both ways. Back to a 13 point game, 8.15 to go. Witt tried to go a little behind the back over the head look. That's a careless turnover. Furman now with 11. Approaching the under eight media timeout. Belmont trying to keep the pressure on this Furman team. Ball poked away. Gillespie looked for a call. Not there. Pagis all by himself with the left-handed finish through traffic. Does it alone. 15-point game. Great job by Foster to get Pagis out on the break quickly. See how quickly Belmont gets back on the other side. Furman trying to stop that kind of secondary fast break on the make. Huey all over Vanderjack, and it's going to be a one and one. 
when we come back. 7.43 to go. Mr. Childress, it's been a good one. It has been a great one for the Paladins as they fight off Belmont at the last media timeout. Belmont was only down eight. Paladins run it up to 15, and a lot of that because of this putback from Tyrese Hewitt. And this ticket was a hot ticket, and it goes to show what these programs are doing around the mid-major ranks and what Furman's win over Virginia did at turn our season ago in the NCAA tournament. And it's not just been a big crowd, it's been an engaged crowd. It's been a fun crowd. It has, it's been really good. And if you're a Belmont fan that's tuning in tonight, high school football is serious in the upstate of South Carolina, and it is playoff time. So there's a lot of local teams that feed a lot of Furman fans into these games that are playing high school football tonight. And still, full packed house here at Timmons Arena. Front end of the one one is good. Belmont just with three team fouls in the second half, so Furman not too near the bonus yet. Belmont can make it a 13 point game if Vanderjack makes the second and he does. So if you coach Casey Alexander and his squad by the under four, where do you need this game? Yeah, you've got to have it down to probably seven, eight at the most by the under four. You've got to get this thing back down in single digits and start managing the game right there. Foster for three. Yes, he does it again. He now has four for me out of the arc. And that was because of a gamble by Belmont defensively led to the open three. Yeah, they have to be a little bit more aggressive, and you probably do have to take some more chances down by this much. But the three-pointer has been the great equalizer for the Paladins here, especially in the second half tonight. Furman with eight more threes. Good for 24-point differential for me on the arc. Here's Cade Tyson. Ball sent to the corner. Vanderjack thought about a three, and then he'll be coming fouled by Foster. And it'll be two coming up at the line. So tell you what, when you try to have to make up a 24-point differential from beyond the arc, that's a lot of points in the paint. Belmont's been successful there, but they'll go to the line for two where they've made some hay in the second half, 10 of 14 from the line, but it's hard to make up when you're it trading is. three for two. No, it really is. Now, if you're Belmont, you do like the fact that the clock is stopped and you can potentially add scores on your score line right here and cut the deficit. But yes, they're gonna have to cut down on the threes from the Paladins and knock down a few of their own if they wanna claw back in this quickly. And the Paladins are keeping the up-tempo pace, right? They're on pace for over 100 points right now, which is stunning in a game like this. But the Paladins are continuing to push the tempo. They're not starting to back down, run clock, things like that. They're keeping the up-tempo. Let's see how long they keep it, because right now the clock is their best friend. Offensive heating back up, combining for eight of their last 10, both these teams, after a little bit of an offensive lull. Heavy man-to-man -man pressure. You wonder when you may start seeing some full-court pressure out of Belmont. Foster's short, rebound taken down by Tyson. Well, heat check there for Foster. Rebounds 40 to 30 in favor of the Paladins. And there, thinking about the three was Gillespie. You hear the Furman staff saying, who has ball? Stop the dribble there. No one does. And a nice finish. Then the lead all of a sudden down to 12. Yeah, Willingham, the grad student, has been impressive tonight. He's had some big, big buckets. Furman slowing things down offensively, working patiently in the half-court set. Here's P.J. Smith, the transfer from Lee. Out to Witt, stops, pops, halfway down and pops back out. Weak side rebound taken down by Belmont. He cut it to 10 or 9. Still plenty of time north of six minutes. Davidson working against Heen. Heen's giving him some space, trying to help on the drive. Back out, open three-pointer on the way. Willingham way off oh. the mark. I think Coach Ritchie might take a timeout. I try to give his team a rest and get some subs here at the 552 mark. Yeah, I wonder if you might see J.P. Pegues coming back in sooner rather than later. He was headed to the scoring table, but coach called him back. We'll see if he ends up over there. J.P. Pegues making his season debut after missing the opener on Monday night at 17 points. Not assist. I'll tell you what, he's sporting a little bit with the triple-double if he can get a handful of rebounds and one more assist here this last 552. Yeah, the Paladins are at their best when J.P. Pegues is on the floor. I talked about it, my keys to the game. It's a really young team that you mentioned earlier on for the Paladins. This is J.P. Pegues' team. As he goes this season, the Paladins will go, and he has been a rock star tonight. Love seeing the little ones out here at Timmins Arena. She looks like she's having a great time this evening. There you see Robert Swanson, a former Paladin player there in the stands. You got Heen as a senior, Marcus Foster, a redshirt senior, so you have a little bit of age there, but then you got the junior in Pagese, junior P.J. Smith, but you have freshman contributors as you count it. So you got some some leaders, and then you got some juniors, or some 
uh, underclassmen coming with you, Mark. So it's kind of the right combination of how to sustain programs. Is you, you got your upperclassmen that can lead with some talented underclassmen. Is that three pointers off the mark and is going the other way? Furman will have the ball underneath with fourth team foul on Belmont. And got the sense Belmont might be on the ropes here with yep. 5:32 to go. This one's on tilt right now. 14 and Paladin basketball. And did JP Pegues know we had just named a player of the game? He comes right out with the layup to run his point total up to 19. Already said a career high assist. Berman content to use the middle clock offensively with this 14 point lead with five minutes to go. Foster looking to back down Tyson. Patience all the way across the lane, spins up and under and I'll tell you what, are you serious? Patience. Tyson quickly the other way. He'll stop, pop off the mark, weak side rebound taken down by P.J. Smith. Berman looking to run, crowd sensing a Paladin pull away here. Foster, can he do it? No. Back rim. Least rebound taken down by Hugh and Furman made. Nope. Quickly shoots the three and kicks the three. JP Pagizio said, You want to pull it out? He says, No, sir. Give him 22 and give Furman time their largest lead at 19. That was also Huey's 10th rebound. Again, you and I were both like, Slow things down. No way for the Paladins. And they run it up to 19. Drive down the lane. Contact doesn't go. And Huey thought he went straight up. We'll have to take another look. That's exactly what Bob Ritchie is saying. Hey, arms are straight up. He's saying he came on with the body. And Coach Ritchie can't believe it. Take another look. See, uh, he went straight up. He was within the circle. There was hardly any contact there. But uh, again, a really well officiated ball game tonight. You're not going to get them all right. First free throw is good. Gillespie now up to 21. He has been very impressive. Jacoby Gillespie, the sophomore from Greenville, Tennessee. He had 17 points in the opener against Georgia State. Has run that up now to 21 tonight. 18 point lead, 425 to go. And you hear Furman setting up the half court offense and Pagese will be fouled by Gillespie. A little bit of sarcastic applause from this crowd. Just the fifth Belmont team foul. And it, but if you're Belmont, you gotta take some chances here. You gotta go yeah. for some steals, go for some traps, and try to force some turnovers and try to crawl back in. And tell you what, it's a tall order down 18, but you're not gonna do it without turnovers. And they may foul again once or twice here. You've also got three one-on-ones, uh, one-and-ones to play with. If you get some pallet and misses, you can get back in quickly as well. Smith takes it hard to the rack, gets fouled. He'll go to the line to shoot two. A little late whistle there coming in. Yeah, I was wondering. Smith. I was like, man, was that's a lot of contact, and Smith will go to the line as you take another look. No question about it. Kind of. Mugged on the arms. Yeah. I tell you what, good minutes from P.J. Smith tonight. 30 minutes of action, 13 points, but here's the most impressive. Five of seven from the field, so he's not forcing shot attempts. He's being efficient and kind of finding his teammates, but making his hay when he has a look. Yeah, again, the transfer from Lee University have been very impressive. He's got a calm game, right? I feel like he's a calming force for this Paladin team. He's been there, done that. Knocks down the two free throws as well to run it up to 20. Biggest lead of the night for the Paladins. Hey, what? Credit Belmont, they kept coming, 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 but the Palace had an answer every time. Berman on the precipice of a big non-conference win here in the second game of the season. Gillespie working against Huey. Hey, what nice job by Huey keeping Gillespie in front of him. Berman doing a little better job of guarding the dribble. Huey is a plus defender. Again, double-digit rebounds again tonight. Very impressed with his game. Gillespie's gonna have to force up a three. Didn't hit the rim, should be a shot clock violation. And how about that defense for 30 seconds? Keeping the ball in front of you forces a tough three and this is gonna take us to our final media timeout. Yeah, Paladin's not backing down at all. One of their best defensive possessions of the game. Up 20, Paladin's looking to roll to 2-0 on the season and get a big mid-major win over the Bruins. Cameron Indoor Stadium against Duke. Yeah, that'll be the Friday after Thanksgiving. That'll be a fun one. You talk about an out-of-conference matchup and a great trip for Belmont. They never back down from anybody. Myrtle Beach Invitational coming up down in Conway uh, this upcoming weekend for the Paladins. Thursday, Liberty, big one, another big one. Yeah, that's going to be a big one. And uh, don't sleep on UAB, Princeton, or Arkansas. They're going out of conference and going strong as well. I love it. I absolutely love the scheduling for both of these teams. This is what you're supposed to do as a mid-major. And what's tough for these mid-majors is to find high major teams they'll say yeah we'll yeah play you. exactly i mean you know herman tried to craft the schedule from a season ago they had a national article kind of complimenting the schedule making for this paladin team of 
going out and finding teams just like Belmont going and playing Arizona among others. So a lot of tests upcoming for these two teams before they get Missouri Valley and Southern Conference play. 3.35 to go, Furman up 20, trying to salt this one away. The Paladins have knocked down 12 from long range, and now Marcus Foster kicks it out to Heen. McGee's with five. He's going to put up a contested three-pointer. That's off the back rim. Ball tipped around underneath. It's grabbed by the Bruins. Rebounds, we made a big deal out of. Furman's out-rebounded the Bruins by 12, so not quite as much as last year, but still a differential as a nice finish underneath by Willingham. 18-point game, and Mark Furman's going to be yeah, they put, just they to put use the this offense on. slow. Absolutely. It's all over with the final score at this point. Palin is going to run some of their set pieces and hopefully not do a lot of that. McGee's gets away with it. A tough pass there. Good aggressive defense from Belmont. McGee ends up on the ground. But yeah, you want to run this clock out at this point, right? Go home, celebrate the weekend, go support your Paladin football team tomorrow as they're taking on VMI with a chance to win an outright football Southern Conference title. Then you're going to go watch the men's soccer team play at home on Sunday afternoon as the Paladins try to clinch a tournament title in the Southern Conference and go on to the NCAAs. So a huge weekend, weekend of sports here. for the Paladins. Yes. One and one for Pegues. Now six of seven from the line, 23 points. So we talked about uh, Bopwell and Slauson, and they've moved on to their professional careers and where does scoring come from? Well, you look down tonight, DJ Smith, 15, <laughs> Pegues, 22, Foster, 16, Heen, 13. I mean, that's balanced high scoring as the Paladins have put up 93 still with 250 to go. It is. One of the best offensive performances I've ever seen from a Paladin team has been against this really good team from Belmont tonight. So points aplenty all over the floor, led by J.P. Pegues. Well, sent to the corner, thought about the three with Vanderjack into the lane, can't finish, and Heen with the rebound. Heen, though, has it tipped away. Turnovers, if, if you're going to treat things, and your coach Richie, you may say the turnover bug, maybe late first half into the second half is another rebound there. Start out of a bit. Yeah, no, so J.P. Pegues now has nine rebounds and nine assists with 221 left. I'm just saying. Triple, I'm just triple, saying. Triple double watch. You're sitting right on the edge of triple double. I don't know if we're going to empty the bench here, and that might be it for Pegues. But flirting with a triple-double as he was held out of the game against North Greenville, his first performance of the season, our player of the game tonight, with good reason. He's been spectacular. Starters coming out for the Paladins. All smiles on the bench, as it should be. A great performance from this Furman team tonight, setting the tone for the 2023-24 season. Molnar in, Vanderwall in, Bowser in, and... For J.P. Pagis, yeah, you probably would like to see the triple doubles. Bowser oh, tries to go high, and tell you what, some frustration a little bit on that Furman bench because you still want to you want to finish the game. Yes, you're up 19, but you got to play smart. And Belmont gives it back on the other end. Yeah, Coach Richie will have some fun with that one in the film room probably over the weekend. But uh, again, one of the rare missteps on the offensive end for the Paladins. Students starting to chant for some. The walk-ons to maybe make an appearance. Here's Whip. Can't get the roll. Nice aggressive move. Vanderwall about it. How about that? Vanderwall's gonna go to the line for a one-on-one and then a 19-point game under two minutes to go, and you're just battling for a board down low going to the hardwood. Yeah, you gotta absolutely love the hustle from Vanderwall. Has had some good minutes tonight for the Paladins. He's got five points and a couple of rebounds in his 19 minutes. There you see Whit. Six points, three of eight for the field, 17 minutes. I'm only two turnovers. Vanderwall. So the only Paladin player that has played and not scored is Molnar in 10 minutes of action, but he's added four rebounds and another offensive board for Furman. And they'll just set up the offense and try to be a little patient. Here's Whit, tries to lob down. Oh, Bowser, hello. Get the feeling you're going to see Mr. Bowser doing that a lot this season. Big time dunk. Paladin is up 21. Wow. Oh. oh, Bowser gets it up to Vanderwall. Two-handed jam. Tim is on its feet. Defense leading the offense, and it's a 23-point lead. Pallet is flirting with a century mark as well with a little bit over under 90 seconds left. Hey, what the effort from this Furman team into the lane contact, and it'll be two shots coming up at the line with 117 to go. They're showing that replay here in the arena. 
Bowser oh, almost explosion. Bowser almost got on a run out as you see the dunk on the alley oop from Bowser. He was trying to get on a run out dunk here. That's what he wanted. He was going to go down and throw down something fancy, but got it to his teammate to throw it down instead. Yeah, was look, we, we compared him a little bit to a rough young Jalen Slauson, and Jalen knew for some breakaway dunks, and now you're going to see a little walk on action coming in for the Paladins. Molnar, the big small as it comes off. Jeremy Burr seeing his first action as a Paladin. How about this? The freshman out of Greenville, South Carolina. Father Andrew Burr, the women's golf coach. Thomas Tillman, the sophomore out of Charleston, in for the Paladins as well. And also, Casey Collins getting some action in. So, the bench looking to be emptied. And see if Jeremy Burr can't get a shot up. There he is in the corner. Thought about a three. Wants to drive baseline and try to be a little unselfish. Put up the rock. Young fella. Quickly back on the other end on the run out. Quick mention, Cason Collins, dad, Wes Collins, yeah. had a great career here as a Paladin when I was in school. So good to see him getting some minutes late as well. I see Herman setting up a half-court set. We'll see who gets the look. Three-pointer makes it 100. Witt, nice backdoor pass to Collins. Reverse slip, count it, put him on the score sheet. 99 for Herman. First bucket of his career. You absolutely love to see it here late. Biggest lead of the night for the Paladins. What a night for Furman basketball. Huge win over Belmont tonight, Bryant. Shot clock turned off. Crowd's going to want to go for 100, but Coach Ritchie telling his team to slow things down. Tell you what, Belmont came with some runs in the second half. Furman responded every time, and listen to this crowd. Look at Casey Collins getting the crowd pumped up here at the end. Big win tonight. I'd have never thought 23-point margin for either one of these teams tonight. Paladins are for real here in 2023-24. Buzzer sounds, 99-76 final. Two respected programs going to shake hands. And Mark, final thoughts. Yeah, final thoughts. It, it starts and finishes with J.P. Pegues.